Hello, BookTube, and welcome back to Book Trek 2021. Uh, this is a five month reading mission that I've embarked on with a bunch of other BookTubers where we read Star Trek fiction uh, for the rest of the year. <laughs> we started in August with the original series, which I know uh, much better than I know any other series, especially the books. I was, I was eagerly consuming the books. Then we moved on in September to Star Trek The Next Generation, which I went into the month not liking and came out liking. I was hoping that that uh, Book Trek 2021 would give me the key to understand Star Trek The Next Generation, because I figured it had to be me, and not the show's millions of, of diehard fans that that was wrong. Uh, and that turned out to be true. I now know how to appreciate Next Generation. I, I've come late to the party, I guess, because now I'm wishing more than anything to read more Next Generation novels set in the original five-year mission of the Enterprise D that capture a lot of the spirit that I'm, I came to appreciate. But nevertheless, September ended. Not September weather. Uh, July weather continued into August and then into September and now into October. The dew point, the humidity level here in Boston has not gone below 70 since, I think, uh, February? We are, we are in tropical weather here. So, but, but nevertheless, the months move on. Uh, and we are now in October, which is Deep Space Nine. Uh, a Star Trek iteration that I really liked when it was airing, even though I thought it needed time to really start to tell the epic stories that it was clearly made to do. Uh, Deep Space Nine is the story of, as the title suggests, a space station, not a, a, a ship. Uh, and the space station orbits a planet named Bajor, uh, which has just un undergone a long and brutal occupation by a military alien species called the Cardassians. The Federation and the Cardassians locked horns over the, the treaty table and loaded phaser fire, phaser fire and came to a, an agreement where the Cardassians would vacate the space station, which they built, and which they called Tarak Nor, and uh, Starfleet would take over. And the reason Starfleet wants to be there is twofold. One, because they want Bajor to enter the Federation once it gets back on its feet. And two, because uh, just outside the orbit of Bajor is a gigantic stable wormhole to another part of the galaxy, the Gamma Quadrant that's stable enough so that it opens and closes regularly and big enough so that ships can move through it. Uh, and those, a lot of those ships, even early on in the show, we're told that a lot of those ships are freighters and, and merchantmen who supply the promenade, the, the sort of commercial district of, of Deep Space Nine, and did so even under the Cardassians. So there is a, by the time we get to this whole story, there is already thriving interaction between the two quadrants through this wormhole, which I thought when I watched the show to start with, and that I've said in this in this series, was a huge dramatic flaw in the thinking of the showrunners, who are really smart people, that of course Starfleet would not leave, that would be the focal point of the Alpha Quadrant, it would be a, a stable gigantic wormhole to the Gamma Quadrant, would be the, the focal point of a lot of people's attention in the Alpha Quadrant, and if it's in nominally Federation space, I mean, it's contested. The Cardassians are right nearby, and Bajor is not technically a member of the Federation. But if the Federation wanted to lay claim to it, they wouldn't send a commander and a partial Starfleet crew onto Deep Space Nine, with the rest of the station being manned by Bajoran personnel under the command of a shapeshifter who owes no allegiance to anybody. Instead, it would be a captain who took over Deep Space Nine, and that captain would have at his disposal a flotilla of starships. Uh, not only in case the Cardassians came back, but also in case anything nasty came out of the wormhole. <laughs> we mentioned yesterday that that did happen. That was the unbelievably epic, fantastic plotline that Deep Space Nine showrunners eventually decided to just center on and tell. The story of the Federation, the Klingons, and the Romulans, all the Alpha Quadrant at war with a, a conquering species that comes through that wormhole, the Dominion. Uh, but the, the novels started coming out right away. Paramount had a machinery up in place by this point. As soon as Deep Space Nine premiered, there were novels. And the novels kept coming out. At the time, there was a blessed era where you could get four new Star Trek novels a month. Uh, and so it is natural that a lot of Deep Space Nine novels that are out there that will be subject to my random flicking to find which one I want next will be set in the early years of the show when Benjamin Sisko is still a commander, hasn't been promoted to captain, when war has not come, where no one's ever heard of the Dominion, 
where the threat will be the lurking Cardassians and maybe anything else that comes through the wormhole. And that is the, the time frame for the book that we're reading today. Proud Helios by Melissa Scott, here shown on Suzy Q, my new Samsung tablet. This is a Samsung S5e uh, razor thin thing. There are the, the, uh, the keyboard connector prongs that I was talking about. Uh, and on the other side, there is the, uh, the SIM card slot. If you want to add something to this thing, it has a function functionality to be made into a phone. I haven't risked yet putting a SIM card in here to make it a phone, but I may, uh, I absolutely love this device. It is light as a feather and it's it's a, a very a very light and uh samsung skin put on an android device with a really strong processor and a beautiful screen this is the best looking screen of any device that i own uh so i took half an hour yes this is a little tech digression but this is a star trek device for god's sake you can look at star trek including deep space nine to see characters holding things like this they don't say samsung i bet samsung would have paid a pretty penny to make sure that they did and i wish this didn't I wish I, I'm, I'm tempted almost to put stickers over over that and the branding at the bottom for the speakers, but I, I like the sleekness of it. I don't want to put anything on it. That's why I took the protective case off it. Uh, but this is just fantastic as a device, just fantastic. I cannot thank the sender enough. Uh, and it felt it felt uh, apropos to be reading on a device that looks like a Star Trek data pad. Uh, but I took half an hour to uh, to play around with this thing. I always forget uh, how much you can do in half an hour to set up and play around with an Android device versus an Apple device. No, no disloyalty to my beloved iPads. But iPads fight you every step of the way, and Apple is in court with half the app providers that, that, they, that you might want to use. Whereas an Android tablet, you go to the Google Play Store and say, I'd like this. And the Google Play Store says, oh, sure. Okay, should we sign you right in? No need to, to hunt through an old notebook to find an old password. We remember you. We know you. You're fine. <laughs> Nothing like that at all. I would still, even 24 hours later, I would still be fighting with a new iPad to try to convince it with tears of rage in my eye that I do, in fact, have a Comcast account. <laughs> I didn't have to do any of that. 30 minutes and I was in and, and working. 30 minutes and I had uh, 300 books loaded onto this thing, a wide variety so that I, no matter what I felt like reading, uh, you know, I have, the new, I have new releases uh, that I read. The bulk of what I read is new releases. I read those new releases when it comes reading time at night, at midnight. But I always set aside a, a fun book in case the new releases aren't fun, which they often aren't. Uh, and I, I put, so I put 300 of those fun books on here, including a large number of Deep Space Nine novels, some of which I have never read. I have never read Proud Helios, and I'm sorry that I did, <laughs> because the curse of Tarak Noor has returned. Is it just me, or are most Deep Space Nine novels really bad? <laughs> Is it just me? <sighs> it's times like this, I wish more of my Book Trek co-hosts were making videos so they could be talking about these things. I don't think anybody's made a Deep Space Nine video other than me. Uh, but I'm getting the strong impression that there was not a high editorial bar for these novels because... What else would explain why so many of the ones that I've read in October have been bad? And this is well-intentioned, but bad. <laughs> it's a well-intentioned novel. And it's, I guess, competently done. I mean, it's set early on in the show's incarnation, so the characters, to be honest, to be fair to Melissa Scott, the characters haven't been fleshed out entirely. But that still leaves a writer room to play around and speculate, and none of that happens here. And the plot of the book is pretty good. Uh, that a cloaked vessel suddenly starts preying on that commerce that's going to and fro through the wormhole. And uh, at first it's just hitting Federation ships, uh, but then it starts hitting Cardassian ships. That is a Cardassian on the cover there. Uh, and that gets the attention of the Cardassian military commander in the area who used to command Tarak Noor, a character named Gal Dukat who is an amazing character study in the course of the, of, the, of the show, Deep Space Nine, and who really deserves a book of his own. I don't know if he's had one, or maybe he has one on fanfiction.net or something like that. I don't recall a Gal Dukat novel, uh, but that gets his attention, and he, he vows that he will completely destroy this, this raider, this pirate, this pirate that is called Proud Helios, 
That on the other person on the cover is Lieutenant Kira Norris, uh, a Bajoran national who fought against Gal Dukat for years as a terrorist, fighting the, the Cardassian occupation, and who is now Benjamin Sisko's second in command on Deep Space Nine, an envoy from her people, and clearly, you know, a, a quasi official Starfleet recognized figure, uh, which puts her and Gal Dukat at odds. I don't quite know why Kira Norris is drawn that way. <laughs> I assure you that uh, Nana Visitor is, uh, did not look like this in the show. She she did not was not carrying an extra fifteen pounds of chub on her face. <laughs> and it's not a very good likeness, is what I'm saying. Actually, the likeness of Gal Dukat is not all that good either. These early Star Trek novel covers, it's like I've always said. What you should do is go on Fiverr and pay somebody to do a concept a concept art cover, a beautiful painting of the space station, Deep Space Nine, with the wormhole in the background, a beautiful cover of the planet Bajor at sunset, or something like that. The marketing executives uh, for Pocketbooks thought, no, you got to put character faces on the book. That's what people are watching the show. These books are spin-offs of the show. you got to put the characters on the show, on the cover. Uh, but hijinks ensue, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Benjamin Sisko is, is captured... Uh, by the pirates, and that doesn't bother Gul Dukat. He is still intent on hunting them down. So Sisko pretty much has to save the day and his own skin before the plot culminates in his own destruction. And a little bit, there's a little bit of a spoiler on this cover. I won't I won't stress it any more than I need to. But aside from Gul Dukat and Kieran Reese, there's one other thing on this cover. I, gee, I wonder, wonder if it's going to play a part in the book. Um, <laughs> it's another pirate story. And it's exciting in its own way, but the problem I have with it is that you could swap out the character names for just generic science fiction characters, do a tiny bit more exposition to explain who and what they are, and the novel would be completely unchanged. Part of that probably has to do with the fact that the characters themselves had not been etched out very well, but we already had something by this point. This is, I think this book came out in the second season of Deep Space Nine, and we already had something. We already had enough to work on. It could be that Melissa Scott was given no time to turn in her 90,000 words. It could be that she was given time, but given such a low bid figure that she thought, I'll be, I'll be damned if I'm going to watch tons and tons of episodes of the show to bone up on these characters for this kind of money. Or it could be that she just took the safe way and thought, you know, I, I don't want to get pounced on by, pocket, by pocketbooks or by fans, so I'll write something fairly anodyne. But either way, this was, by the, its third act, boring. And it is not alone in that fact when it comes to Star Trek fiction, Deep Space Nine fiction. Is it just me, or is it really bad? <laughs> so I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep going, undaunted. I'm gonna keep going. I'm going to delete Proud Helios. I am never going to read it again. Uh, but I'm gonna keep going. I'll find another book. Maybe I'll go very much later in the series when Cisco is a, is a captain. I, I feel sorry doing that because that writes off four years of books. But maybe the books don't get good until the Dominion War. Until the writers have something to sink their teeth into. I don't I don't agree with that. I don't think that I'll I'll decide at random I when I pick my reading for tonight. And I am also going to try, uh, now that I've got this tablet that I inordinately love, I'm gonna try to see about that bit about uh, taking new books into into the reading time. Maybe some of the new books can go on this on this device. That's entirely possible. I'm going to have to see what I can do about that. I'm going to see, uh, uh, like, for instance, if I were to go to NetGalley and go back in my queue to books that have a publication date sometime in mid-October, can I send another copy of those? You know how when you, you go to your NetGalley book and you say, read now, send to Kindle. I've never tried. I've never gone back to any of those earlier books. I always do send it to the Kindle app, and they those would show up on here. I'm sure they would. I've read all of them. What about something that's coming out this month that I could conceivably review? Am I going to be able to go back in my queue on NetGalley, open up the file on one of those earlier books and send it again? Or do you only get one send on NetGalley? I'll have to try that out uh, and see what I can do. Because uh, it would be nice to read on this thing all night long. <laughs> it very much would be nice to do that. Uh, but either way, that that's a tech thing. That's from the, the, the tech side of this channel. For the Star Trek side, <laughs> not a good one. Not one that I can recommend. Competently done, but not Star Trek. Uh, not any of the characters that I care about. Not Nothing like that. I might, I try not to plan these things ahead of time, but I might 
try another early pre-Dominion War Deep Space Nine novel tonight just to test my theory. And if it's not good, then I'll just concentrate for the rest of the month on later Deep Space Nine novels. And if those aren't good, I don't know what I'll do. <laughs> I don't know what I'll do. I'll report back here is what I'll do. I'll complain to you about it. <laughs> anyway, not a recommend, I'm afraid, uh, but we'll try again tomorrow. <laughs> Thank you, Book Two.